And all God's people shall say, Amen. Amen. Thanks be to God. Our second lesson is from 2 Corinthians. Paul founded uh, the church in Corinth around 50 CE. Uh, his first letter to the people of Corinth really addressed some morality issues that, that the church was dealing with. Uh, the second letter to Corinth is interesting. Uh, the first nine chapters are really exhortations, uh, Paul trying to be encouraging to the community, and then 10 through 13, the mood seems to change and, uh, and the writing style. And we don't know whether uh, 2 Corinthians is a combination of several letters from Paul or if Paul got some news about the church at Corinth that changed his mood. So this is sort of an interesting letter or letters from Paul that we call uh, 2 Corinthians. Uh, today we're reading uh, something about light, as Susan brought up, and hope that is within us. Actually, the choir just sang the sermon. I should just sit down now. It's great. Yeah. Listen for the Spirit's movement in these words. For we do not proclaim ourselves. We proclaim Jesus Christ as Lord and ourselves as your slaves for Jesus' sake. For it is the God who said, let light shine out of darkness, who has shown in our hearts to give light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. But we have this treasure in clay jars, so that it may be made clear that this extraordinary power belongs to God and does not come from us. We are afflicted in every way, but not crushed, perplexed, but not driven to despair, persecuted, but not forsaken, struck down, but not destroyed, always carrying in the body the death of Jesus, so that the life of Jesus may also be made visible in our bodies. For while we live, we are always being given up to death for Jesus' sake, so that the life of Jesus may be made visible in our mortal flesh. So death is at work in us, but life in you. The word of the Lord. Let us pray. Almighty God, as we walk through life, indeed we get beaten up a bit. Help us. Help us to embed ourselves in your word, in your community of encouragement, and around your table. So that we may know the promise of your light in our clay jars. And all God's people shall say, so I'm going to apologize to all you vegetarians out there for this next illustration. I'm also going to apologize to all you meat eaters who did not eat enough breakfast and are hungry. My first uh, year here, one, one of the members uh, of this church invited me to, to meet him at the Players Retreat down near NC State, a little restaurant. So we sat down and uh, I said, what's good here? He said, the Wolfpack Burger. You have got to get the Wolfpack Burger. I said, right on. It's kind of like a southern burger. You know, it's got the chili and the slaw and all that good stuff. And he said, they grind their meat here every day so it's nice and fresh so you can order it rare. And so sure enough, I said, well, I'll have one of those. Well, this thing came out. On the plainest plate you have ever seen, I mean, the presentation was pitiful, and, and uh, you know, it, 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 it looked like an okay burger, but I am here to tell you, when I bit into that thing, mm, mm. I mean, this hamburger was God's gift to humanity. I have, I have no problem saying that. 
I said, we should have got the fine china out for this. This should be garnished up like royalty. This is beautiful. Isn't it funny how some of the best food you have had is just, you know, the presentation just isn't that great? And, you know, frankly, it probably doesn't need to because the food's so good. I remember my family did a biking trip in Portland, Oregon, to all the food carts around that city. And we, we went to a grilled cheese cart. And I was like, a grilled cheese cart? And sure enough, in this gnarly-looking foil packet, I pulled out a slice of grilled cheese. Best grilled cheese I have ever tasted in my life. Should have been on a silver platter. You know what I mean? It was great. My favorite restaurant in my town, Hoagie Haven, Princeton, New Jersey. There is not one one table to sit around in that place. You walk in and you have to walk out and find a seat. Their food comes in the Italian people's bakery bag. It's not even their business bag. It's somebody else's business bag. But it is the best sandwich I have ever tasted. I mean, th- these things need to be dressed up. And isn't it funny? Sometimes we, we go to places and there's all sorts of beautiful garnish and decorations. And, and the main course is, just does not live up to all that garnish. Uh, you know, but some of these places that don't present well at all just have fantastic food. Well, Paul's got a a phrase in here that uh, we have treasures, or the Corinthians have treasures in clay jars, or a treasure in clay jars. And when we hear that, uh, we might think about uh, filet mignon being in a styrofoam, you know, dish or something. We might think about lobster being in a Dixie cup. But really, what he is talking about is he is talking about those clay jars, nothing fancy at the time. They're like the styrofoam platters or styrofoam boxes of the time. And that there is a treasure within them. That is God. And we are those clay jars. Friends, indeed, we are clay jars that have been beat up a little bit in life been worn out a bit from life, but we are promised by God that there's a treasure within there, that there is a light that Susan talked about that God has provided within us, the light of the Spirit, the light of Christ, the light of God, a heart that knows only the glory of God. And I just love, I've, as long as I've read the Bible, I've loved this mantra that, that Paul gets into, that we are afflicted but not crushed, perplexed but not despairing, persecuted but not forsaken, struck down but not destroyed. Don't you feel like, if you're honest, That some days, yes, you feel exactly like those words, but you just aren't sensing that light. You just aren't sensing that treasure. You just aren't sensing in your heart that glory that God has promised you because you've been beat up so much in the world. And that is why, that is why it is so important in our lives to continue to engage in the reading of God's word in scripture, not just on Sundays, but carving out time in your homes so that you can hear over and over again about this light and about this treasure, and about this glory that is promised within you that is more than a feeling. It is why we don't just go to a mountaintop alone to ponder God's hope, that we do it in community because sometimes we read these words and it's still not sinking in and we need people around us to occasionally say to us, I see light in you. 
I see a treasure in you in just the way you are. I see glory, the glory of God in your being. It is why we need to do this thing called faith formation in community because we need encouragement. And it's why we come around this beautiful table and have a meal together because it is a remembrance of the light and the truth and the hope and the life that laid down his life and went through suffering and understands human suffering and afflictedness and brokenness and still defeats that death, that brokenness, and brings light and life. And so we need this table, this meal, this nourishment, so that we might remember that good news. I uh, uh, was visiting Al Thomas uh, recently. Al uh, has been battling cancer. Al is a minister. He has worshiped at this church and taught at this church for years. And uh, he's had a little stretch at, at Rex Hospital. And um, we were having a great visit. And he told me that a chaplain at Rex Hospital had um, come and visited him. And uh, the, the chaplain had let down his hair a little bit because he knew that Al was a minister and he was a minister. And as they were talking, talking a little bit about Al's wrestling with cancer, uh, the chaplain said, you know, my wife just died and I've been grieving that. And so in the midst of caregiving, uh, these two pastors were caring for one another. And then uh, in a moment, that chaplain broke into song, just broke into song like Susan did, and he started singing, Great is thy faithfulness. And uh, it just touched Al so deeply. And actually, in the middle of the song, Al's phone rang. <laughs> and the man stopped singing. And Al took the call, and the chaplain said, I'm going to come back and finish that song. And the next day, sure enough, in walked that chaplain, and he finished uh, Great is Thy Faithfulness with Al. A chaplain who was grieving the death of his wife still 